Today I'm joined by Chairman of the Council for a Livable World, former Senator and Presidential Candidate Gary Hart. Senator Hart, thank you so much for joining us today. Very great pleasure, thank you. My first question I want to ask is this idea that you've been talking about on a broader view of security. What does it mean to have security and what can we do to achieve this broader security goal? We come out of a half century, the second half of the 20th century, where national security was defined totally in military terms. And in the 21st century, given the new realities of globalization, the information revolution, uh, failing states, and the rise of terrorism, security is going to mean a lot more things and bigger things than it did even 15 years ago. It must include not only the security of our borders, clearly, and prevention of future terrorist attacks. It must mean the security of our environment, uh, both climate change and the, and the health of our air and our water for our children and their children. It must include energy security. We cannot continue to fight wars in the Persian Gulf for someone else's oil. It must include the security of livelihood. We're challenged by foreign competitors and jobs are going overseas. And I think finally it must include also a sense that all Americans can have at least basic health care. If we add all of those dimensions to what security means and what national security means, then I think it changes virtually all of our policies and the way we as a nation approach this problem. Now, Senator, you've done a lot of work on the issue of combating terrorism, including the commission that you chaired with Warren Rudman. And my question to you is, a lot of our approach to terrorism has been very reactive under the Bush administration. Do you see a way that we can have a more anticipatory approach to dealing with terrorism? Well, I think no doubt about it that we have this conflict, and it is a conflict, must be carried out on two dimensions. It must be treated as organized crime. I, I was very early among those who said the war analogy, with the exception of Afghanistan, simply doesn't make sense. We're not dealing with nation-state armies here. We're dealing with small cells, some of which are uh, very remotely attached to any kind of al-Qaeda center. So we have to combine with other nations, our law enforcement and special forces, to isolate and um, remove those cells. But we also have to address the recruitment problem, which is a human, human and human resource problem. And that uh, requires not just military or, or paramilitary means, but it also means that we have to educate people. We have to promote American constitutional values and principles, and not just our popular culture in foreign countries. Right now, America, in many traditional cultures, is seen as, um, as a fairly shallow commercial uh, entity, and I think we've got to get across to young people, not only in the Arab world, but elsewhere, that the principles upon which this country was founded are profound principles that can, in, in effect, uh, and in fact, benefit their lives if implemented in their areas. But we cannot impose democracy on other cultures. We can offer it. We can help educate. We can live up to our own standards, which is quite hard to do, and we uh, don't always do that. And I think in doing that, we can dry up the swamp from which terrorist recruits come. Now, Senator, the Bush administration has paid lip service to the threat of a terrorist organization acquiring the material that they would need for a nuclear weapon. How do you think the next president should deal with the threat of nuclear terrorism, specifically um, unsecured fissile material in the former Soviet Union? Well, I think that you've put your finger on the problem. This is principally, not totally, but principally, a problem of Russia and the former Soviet Union. Uh, we could have and should have substantially increased our commitment to the so-called non-Luger initiative of helping the Russians themselves demilitarize and decommission their nuclear arsenal. Uh, that means also, by the way, giving their nuclear scientists something to do. One of the problems with proliferation of nuclear weapons is the material itself, but also the knowledge of how to produce it. So you have to deal with decommissioning and detoxifying the materials used in the weapons, but you also have to give the highly skilled and highly trained Russian scientists something else to do. They can be put to work in, in effect, destroying what they have created, but they also have to have longer-term positive uh, positions and professional lives as well. 
contributing what they know to a more constructive um, future world in, in their own country and elsewhere. But we have lagged in the current administration way behind on this effort. And I think we also have um, failed to support international initiatives. The International Atomic Energy Agency that uh, was so active in Iraq, we kind of brushed aside. That agency has to be increased, it has to be fully funded, and we have to be totally committed to it to prevent future countries from increasing or getting nuclear arsenals. Senator Hart, insightful as always. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.